Hey everybody, it's Michael here with GoodEReader.com. We're at the American Library Association Annual Conference 2013, and we're joined today by the president of AILA, Maureen Sullivan. First of all, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. This is a great conference, wonderful programs, a lot of exciting news, and the halls are just full of people who are eager to learn and participate in the conference. It seems like this year beyond all, all years that there is a lot of technology companies here that are uh, you know, ILS systems, ebook uh, lending systems. There's a, there's a lot of movement, and and the whole digital with libraries has really grown. I think, and even in this last year, can you tell us a little bit of what digital means to libraries? Well, digital, of course, is all of our futures, but it's particularly an important part of the future for libraries. And I think the reason you're seeing so many more vendors here who are selling digital technology and different applications of that is there's a clear recognition that libraries need to have these resources in order to keep up with the changing needs and demands of the public. So one question that I have of you is, we've all known about a lot of pilot projects that have been established. Penguin had a, a pilot project in New York and then subsequently moved across the entire USA. And there are a, num a number of other publishers running the same kind of pilot projects. What type of role did AILA have in uh, the development of um, you know, the contract negotiations or getting publishers on board? Because I can't imagine it, it would be easy. So this issue has been one that ALA has been deeply interested in for several years. But I think we really got off the ground when my predecessor, Molly Raphael, decided that it was important for us to reach out and begin to engage the big six publishers in New York. So she led a couple of delegations, and then when I became president, I've had the privilege of doing that as well. And all of this was based on a deep belief that the best way for us to bring about change in this was to help the publishers understand why it's so important for them to sell ebooks to libraries at a reasonable price. We knew from the beginning it would have to be a case of influence and persuasion. We could not control it. And we also knew that each of these companies has to be very careful about how they share information and they particularly have to be careful not to even give the appearance of colluding with one another. So we had a series of individual meetings, and when those meetings were first held, we found that there was a fair amount of tension in the room, there was a lot of uncertainty. So we took the approach that we needed to keep the lines of communication open, and we, need to in we needed to invite the publishers, when they were able, to share with us some of what they might be doing. Also at the start, we became aware they were struggling to understand what this new economy and this new ecosystem would mean for them. And I think one of the things that has evolved is we've come to a point where we, the publishers, I think authors and others who are in this ecosystem recognize it's a new world and we have to figure out new ways of working in our individual sectors within this, but also new ways of working across the lines. And one of the things that motivated us with publishers from the beginning is we have a long and strong history of an effective relationship where our common goal is getting content to the reader. And for a long time, it was print contact content. We talk about books. Now we're using the term ebooks for the to reflect the book in the digital format. And what we at ALA and in all of our libraries want is the opportunity to continue to purchase this content, now in ebook form, at a reasonable price. And I think it's the dichotomy of the pricing structure which seems to be almost one of the last hurdles. It seems that every major publisher has a different pricing structure for libraries and it makes library, especially smaller libraries that may not have a large operating budget, to allocate enough funds for ebooks because in some cases uh, the ebook is three times the amount of the hardcover book. So that in itself is preventing from small and medium type libraries from really investing themselves in the digital and what do you think are some of the last hurdles that uh, ALA is facing in terms of uh, dealing with publishers and getting ebooks more prevalent in libraries big and small? So I think the last hurdle is for the publishers to recognize the value of selling ebooks to libraries at a reasonable price and I deliberately use the word reasonable because we're not making the case for the same but libraries have had the benefit of discounted pricing 
from the publishers for their purchases when it was in the print form. We want to be sure that our libraries are able to purchase and make available the ebooks as they are being published and as I keep saying, at a reasonable price. Your, the start of your question reminded me of two other key points. When all of this controversy started, we also were making the case that they had to sell to libraries. And now, through the pilots, they're discovering that there are ways to form relationships with libraries, and we're very happy to see that happen. But the second thing that has been important to us throughout is to ensure that the publishers understand what, how libraries really work, and that libraries are in a position to help promote books because we introduce readers to books that authors had previously published or new books that they're about to publish. We host book clubs. And one of the interesting things that has developed is what I think of as the Buy It Now button that you can see on library websites where if you're going to the website, you want to borrow the ebook and it's not available to you because of restrictions on use you have the option of actually buying that book. And I think there are some interesting opportunities in the future in terms of new working relationships between libraries and publishers. And I think we're in the very early stages of seeing that as a possibility. I agree, and it, it seems like in a short amount of time that there's many vendors that are actually participating in the Buy It Now button and it generates an extra revenue stream for the libraries earning ebook commissions. The publishers are happy because if there's 50 people in the waiting list, you, you could simply buy the book and have it instantly delivered. And that's almost new ground for libraries where in the past it was a place where you would just simply borrow books, but now libraries within a digital format are actually getting in the business of selling books. Going forward, if this trend continues maybe in the future, how do you, do you, do you see libraries becoming a little bit more profitable or being able to generate a little bit more money? Where do you see the process of selling digital content sort of going maybe in the future, if you could speculate? So I would say that we're going to continue to be nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. but there also is still another opportunity that some libraries are already experiencing, and that is as communities lose bookstores, the library then becomes a place where the books can be made available both print and electronic, and who knows what formats are coming in the future. But what I think we're going to see is new opportunities for a partnership where we're back to what publishers and libraries most want, and that is getting the content into the hand of the reader for whatever reason the reader wants that content. We've spoken a lot about uh, the, the big six, big publishing companies. We've talked to a number of libraries like Douglas County, which has really spearheaded independent publishers and bringing them on board. Do you, do you see a place in the library for unknown authors and, and small press publishers such as Smashwords and companies like that that are authors that are publishing books purely digital and bypassing print altogether. How do you see independent publishing sort of affecting libraries in terms of there's suddenly an availability of tens of thousands of books at a fraction of the cost? So libraries for a very long time have been purchasing from independent publishers. And one of the real values of the librarian is that this is an individual whose professional practice calls for them to understand the wealth of what's being produced in knowledge. And now we have a lot of knowledge being produced in a digital frame. I think it's going to create a whole different way of creating and publishing this knowledge. And I think libraries are absolutely going to be a part of that stream. What it's going to look like in a future state, I don't know. I just, I believe it's going to look different. And I very much want libraries to be at the forefront of ensuring that our readers, everyone in all of our communities, has access to the information they want. Okay, so it, it almost looks like since we spoke together last in, in Seattle for the a, uh, ALA, ALA Midwinter, that a lot of things have happened. What do you think for the rest of 2013, what does the ALA have planned in terms of projects or, or uh, things like that? What is important to, to you in this next year? So we're continuing to do research to understand the patterns of use. We are always happy to see the results of the research that Pew is doing. That's been very valuable to us. We just announced on Thursday a new initiative, and it is authors for ebooks and libraries. And we're reaching out to authors 
to invite them to come with us to make the case for ebooks being available from publishers. And we were delighted to have Cory Doctorow, Ursula Le Guin, and Jody Picot be the first three authors who are ready to stand with us to make this case. And we're ready to start reaching out to other authors as well. Another area in which we're going to be focusing, and this is our digital content and libraries working group, is very much going to focus on the whole area of access to ebooks for school libraries and for children. And we'll continue to engage with the big six publishers in New York, and of course, at some future point soon, they're not going to be the big six anymore because there are changes occurring there as well. And I am optimistic that we have made a very effective case to most of the publishers and that we're going to see a breakthrough in this. And the American Library Association is not going to let up its pressure until we see that breakthrough because we are in a very important special position to make the case for why it is everyone in this country needs to have access to material through the library. And often people talk about this access to materials that, that exist at the library as being free. I prefer to think of it as being without cost because our libraries are community assets and our communities have invested in those assets, the buildings as well as the collections, the people and the services. And we have an important stewardship responsibility in ensuring that those assets are effectively managed and maintained. And all we've been doing is trying to bring the digital content in so that that is available to people who now prefer to use information and to read in a digital frame. Final question, kind of playing off of that, with the prevalence of digital on libraries, more libraries are actually doing community programs that have to do with digital li literacy, understanding uh, uh, electronic content, um, teaching, uh, say, young and older folk how, not how uh, to utilize social media because it's new to a lot of people so libraries have always been doing this but it seems with the prevalence of audiobooks ebooks and, and video content that there's more digital outreach programs how important of a role do you think that libraries play in a community to promote say digital literacy or understanding of this uh, new frontier that we're entering so i think libraries are a critical force in this new frontier for as long as libraries have existed, they've played a very important role in supporting self-directed education and learning. They're places that people can come in, be self-directed in doing what it is that they need to do in acquiring knowledge. Now that we're in more of a digital age, it is just as important for libraries and librarians to be at the forefront. And often we learn about a new community need because of the digital situation, because people are coming in and asking for help. Libraries also are critical with digital literacy because librarians are ready to help people develop the critical thinking skills to understand how to read and comprehend and use information that is now more available in the digital form. And librarians have been working to keep up with the new developments in the print world as well as in the digital world. I think we're among the best prepared positioned and the most highly committed to actually take this work on. Well said. So we've just heard from Maureen Sullivan, the president of the American Library Association. Uh, my name is Michael and you're listening to a GiddyReader.com exclusive. <music>